Could we take our little clock book and begin our remembrance meeting by saying 245? 245. On that same night, Lord Jesus, when all around you joined, cast its darkest shadows across thy holy mind. We hear thy voice, my Savior, this to remember me. With joyful hearts responding, we do remember thee. Two, four, five from the other clock, and may we stand to some peace. Two, four, five,
block in Tudor 5 in Percy Morris Bar. He died in the cell street with perfect sound and joy to it that heavenly melody in Tudor 5 little block. We'll praise the glorious Lord, who died to set us free. Nor earthly songs can joy afford like heavenly melodies. Yeah.
on the subject. <coughs> Thank be that not only did Jesus bear the weight of our sins upon the cross, mm. but he also Amen. accepted and understood the pain of that. Mm. He bore our punishment. Mm. He took our punishment on himself. Mm. He not only became sin for us, but he bore our punishment. Mm. He felt the full wrath of God. So this morning, thank you that we are reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Mm-hmm. On the cross, we see our blessed Lord Jesus, who is the sum of all perfection, mm-hmm. tenderness, purity, holiness, and love, suffering on our behalf. That sacred head that only thought of mercy, love, and truth was crowned with thorns. <coughs> our sinful thoughts might be forever purged. His holy feet could only walk on errands of mercy. Or nailed to a cruel tree, that ours might be delivered and be wayward and willfully wandering. Before this perfect servant died of suffering, we thank thee that. Our blessed Lord Jesus submitted to his Father's will and became the perfect atoning sacrifice for sins. Christ offered his heart to God and put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He bore the burden to God and suffered and died alone. Amen. And so far we thank thee that was God's Perfect love that put him on that cross. He thanked you that he was brought down into that, into the vessel of death in order to gloriously raise above and beyond. He was brought down in order to bring us up out of it. So, Father, we thank you that he is now exalted. Lifted up from hell, never to die or suffer me. Seated at the right hand of God, place of honor and power. This morning we give you thanks for him, the one who he who is all together love. The blessed Lord Jesus, the one who loved us and gave himself for us. Amen. 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 much this morning of the contrast between our Savior's suffering and the lowly place which he took and the glory that is his now in our first hymn I was struck by the line uh, we see thee now ascended the church's glorious head we begin that verse with we know thee now is risen the firstborn from the dead he died for us as our mother has been mentioning in worship he suffered the punishment for our sins. He entered into the lowliest of all. And now he's the church's glorious head. And in our second hymn, we sang of redemption's glory being shed abroad. And uh, yeah, we also sang that uh, statement that he's going to take us for his own, where in glory, love will be displayed in glory. And I've been thinking considerably of the glory and how we can give glory to the Lord Jesus. And uh, we have these two thoughts joined together, don't we, in that magnificent passage of Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, if you just look at it for a moment, please. This beautiful, no doubt that hymn, 
that the early church sang. I think that Paul and William quoting it here, but it seems to be common opinion anyway. We know in Philippians chapter 2, this is a, a parenthetical passage, a, a passage in brackets, where Paul is exhorting the, the Philippian believers to be humble and be lowly and to be meek like our Savior and to consider others more than themselves. And he gives this tremendous example, the greatest example of all, of uh, how the Lord Jesus showed humility and meekness and lowliness, and he put others before himself. He put us before himself, and he suffered and died in our room instead. And he says in uh, chapter 2 of Philippians, verse 5, let this mind, let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery, a thing to be grasped at, to be equal with God, he but made himself of no reputation, but he said, made himself as nothing at all, and took upon him the form of a servant, of a bond slave, and was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. I love this. He's highly exalted our Savior. And given him actually the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's interesting to me that God's eternal purpose in the cross, in the suffering and death of the Lord Jesus, in the awful punishment that we be reminded of that he, he took for us, that in all of this, God's eternal, eventual purpose was to obtain glory. And the Lord Jesus is going to be recognized by every tongue and by every person bowing the knee in heaven, earth, and hell. And by this, God is going to obtain glory. And the Lord Jesus, our glorious Savior that we've been singing about, is the one that obtains glory. And I, I was just thinking of how God is glorified throughout the scriptures. We all are familiar with Psalm 19 and how the psalmist there, he gives forth a burst of praise and he said, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show of his handiwork. It's just an, amazing. We've been doing a little uh, series at our assembly, River Drive Bible Chapel, uh, concerning the existence of God and proofs of his existence. And part of that uh, series has dwelt on the magnificence of the creation of God, the, the, the awesome immensity of the universe that he has created. And the, the, the psalmist, you could say, the heavens declare, they show forth the glory of God. What an awesome, glorious God we have. But, you know, it's interesting that uh, Paul, when he speaks of the glory and what we should glory in, look at Galatians chapter 6 for a minute. He says in Galatians chapter 6, and verse 14, he says, But God forbid that I should glory, not so much in creation and the wonder of creation, though we do see God's glory there and we glorify him for it and we appreciate it to some extent, the little that we know of it, the immensity of it. But Paul says, But God forbid, Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, But God forbid that I should glory, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we've been singing of that this morning, how that redemption's glory is what we revel in this morning. We poor sinners have this morning cause to glorify God because of his redemption that he has accomplished for sinners like us through the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus. It's amazing, isn't it? And uh, I have been thinking lately you know, of, of uh, how we, in, in our little way, and yet a way that's very precious to the Lord, can actually add to God's glory. That, that's 
almost seems like a, uh, a contradiction, doesn't it? God is so great and we're so small. Uh, as we often sing in the little Sunday school chorus, we are weak, but he is strong. But we can glorify God, and God appreciates it. Look at Psalm 50 for just a moment. I love this, this uh, passage. Psalm 50. Uh, I've got this reference right here. The 50th Psalm. And yes, the last verse. And here the psalmist says, in verse 23 of Psalm 50, Whoso offereth praise, glorify God. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Just amazing this morning. <laughs> Peter says, you know, that we are living stones and we have been built into the temple of God so that we might offer up spiritual sacrifices. Interesting that our praise to our Savior and to our God is a spiritual sacrifice. And uh, the writer of the Hebrews speaks of that. He says that uh, we can offer up the praise of our lips to God. And uh, this is something that God appreciates and that God enjoys and that God wants from his redeemed people. So whoever offers praise, the psalmist says, glorifies God. And if you just look over at Psalm 69 for a moment, there's an amazing statement about, about our praise there. In Psalm 69, the psalmist says in verse 30, I will praise the name of God. How do we know the name of God this morning? We've been dwelling on the name of God, the eternal I am, the Jehovah, the Yahweh, self-existent one, all the attributes of deity, omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence, and immutability, and yet His holiness, the name of God, He is holy. The, the seraphim continually cry, holy, 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 Lord, God Almighty. And here we see the name of God, but to us thou shalt call His name Jesus, Jehovah's Savior, for He shall save His people from their sins. And He has saved us from our sins. Our brothers been mentioning in prayer this morning. He took the punishment to save us from our sins. So here the psalmist says, I will praise the name of God with a song. Isn't that great? <laughs> when, we, when we sing, I'm not much of a singer, but, but I like to sing anyway because I enjoy praising the Lord. <laughs> and in spite of all my limitations in music and singing, Still, he, he appreciates it. He appreciates it. When we, when we sing to his name, to magnify his name, and magnify him with thanksgiving. And here's a verse I just love. Verse 31. This also shall please the Lord. Please the Lord. How can we please our Lord this morning? We can magnify him with a song. We can magnify him with thanksgiving. Tell him, thank you, thank you. And... Uh, here, here he says, This shall please the Lord more than an ox or a bullock that hath horns of hoof. And I, I might have mentioned this illustration here before, but I love that story I was told some time ago uh, concerning the Pells. Maybe some of you remember the Pell family, Peter Pell and Bill Pell, marvelous teachers. And, and uh, the, their family, they established a, a nursing home in Grand, in, uh, Grand Rapids. Uh, I think it's called Grand Haven, still there, tremendous institution. And they started the Gospel Folio Press and Sunday School papers and Christian literature. And Peter and William were wonderful teachers. But old Mr. Pell, the father of those two great teachers, he had a habit of entertaining Christians in his home. They were very poor. They had a farm building. It was out in the country then, down in the section of Grand Rapids. It's built up. I remember visiting there probably about 25 years ago. And it's built up now. But all fields around this farmhouse and they would entertain God's people there. And uh, one day uh, they were entertaining uh, Leonard Sheldrake, the marvelous teacher of God's Word. And you know, the interesting thing is old Mr. Pell had a habit, they tell me, of getting up every morning and the first thing he did was sing through a a hymn of praise to God 
at the top of his voice. So he didn't need an alarm clock in, in, in that house for, for waking up in the morning because he sang a hymn through at least one hymn at the top of his voice. And sometimes he sang two hymns. Magnified the Lord with a song, with praise and with thanksgiving. And as he's sitting at breakfast one morning looking out over the fields and Mr. Leonard Sheldrake with him, Mr. Sheldrake said to him, you know, Mr. Pell, I figure that you've given the Lord more than $500 this morning. And Mr. Pell looked at Mr. Sheldrake and he said, Brother Sheldrake, he said, I hardly got five cents, let alone $500. How would you figure that out? Well, he said, isn't it true, Brother Pell, that this morning, first thing, sunrise, you got up and you sang two hymns right through at the top of your voice. Yes, he said, that's true. Well, he said, the psalmist said that he who offers praise to God with a song pleases the Lord more than a person who offers us an ox or a bullock that has horns and hoofs. And they looked out in the field and there were some cows with horns and hoofs. And he said to Mr. Uh, Pell, he said, how much do you think a, a, one of those cows would be worth? the market today. Oh, he said, I guess maybe about $250 each. Well, he said, there you go. He said, you will please the Lord more than a person who offered up two of those cows. So he said, I figure you've offered the Lord more than $500 worth of money this morning with your praise. It's just amazing, isn't it? Uh, where is it? There's a verse in the Psalm, I think it's Psalm 29, two where it says that <coughs> In the temple of God, everyone speaks of his praise, of his glory. And that's sometimes translated, everything speaks of his glory. So that's as it should be. You know, all the furniture spoke of his glory. Every part of the, the, the uh, uh, utensils, the, the, the uh, altars, and the altar of incense, and the, 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 the menorah, the golden candlestick, and the table of showbread and the, the curtains and the, everything about that, that tabernacle and later that temple spoke of his glory. And the people, when they came in, they spoke of his glory. So this morning, as we come together to remember our Lord Jesus and the price that he paid on Calvary's cross to redeem our souls from sin and Satan and hell and death and to bring us into his glory. He is pleased this morning, and the Father is pleased when we offer him our praise. And he that offers our praise glorifies God. And just let it be true this morning of us as we gather together that every one of us, whether silently or audibly, we speak of his glory. We give to him the praise and the glory that's due to his holy name for his name. Amen. Number 93 in the record. 93 in the record. The Lamb of God who is open and the tale of glory to come upon us upon his head in the name of the Lord. The Father gives his only Son for glory to us. For us, the will to return and die as God's sacrifice.
saved us, that we might be to the praise of the glory of thy grace. And our God, we realize that we are going to be to the praise of thy glory of thy grace through all eternity. And our Father, when we think this morning of thy grace, our hearts are overwhelmed. Our Father, when we think of our own unworthiness, our undeservingness, Lord, of any of thy mercies, we remember how that Jacob long ago he could say, I'm not worthy of the least of thy mercies or thy truth which thou hast shown unto me. But Lord, this morning you have showered us with, with mercy. You have showered us with grace. Lord, we did not deserve any of your love or any of your grace or your mercy, but we praise thee, our God, this morning, as we have been reminded that the Lord Jesus took the punishment for our sins. And our Father, we see the glory of thy love, redemption's love, as we have been seeing. And I give to thy Son that God so loved us that he gave his only begotten Son. He gave him to suffering. He gave him to punishment. He gave him to death. And our Father, we thank thee that our Savior loved his Father so much and loved us so much that he was willing to leave that unspeakable glory of thy presence and that wonderful fellowship that he had with thee for all eternity in the glory and to come down to this scene where we were, Lord, and that he was willing to be despised and rejected of men and a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And our Father, we only know a little of what that means, our God, but when we think of our Savior, our holy, perfect Savior, and what it meant for him to be acquainted with grief and be despised and rejected of men, our Father, we can't really comprehend the totality of it, but we praise Thee for it. We praise Thee for His meekness, for His holiness, for His love, for His perfection, for His entire devotion to Thyself, and that He could say that uh, offerings and burnt offerings Thou were not pleased with, but You who have prepared Him a body, and He came in the volume of the book, He could say, It is written of Thee, I come to do Thy will, O God, and Thy will was to show Thy love, the glory of thy love, the glory of thy grace to sinners like us, and Lord, to allow thy Son to suffer infinitely on Calvary's cross to put away our sins. And Lord, we praise thee that he not only was willing to do that, but that he was successful, that our Father, he accomplished the purpose for which thou didst send him. And Lord, we thank thee that at the end of those three long, dark, lonely hours of terrible agony and suffering, when he endured the righteous wrath of God against our sins, he could cry with a victor's cry, with a triumphant cry, it is finished, it's accomplished. And Lord, we praise thee for that finished work. And Lord, we thank thee too that we have been reminded from thy word that because he did this, you have highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth. And Lord, every tea every tongue should confess that he is Lord, that he is sovereign to the glory of his Father. Lord, we just praise thee this morning for our Savior. We thank thee for this opportunity to say thank you 
We tell him that we appreciate what he did. We appreciate thy love in giving him. We appreciate, Lord, this opportunity to magnify him, to glorify him, to praise him with our song, with our hearts, with our voices, Lord, and to remember him in the way that he asked us to do in the breaking of bread and the drinking of the cup. We just praise you, bless you, Lord, for your love to us, for the Lord Jesus, for all that we have in him. And we glorify him this morning, thy wondrous son, in his own precious and holy name, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us give thanks for this bread. Holy God and the Father, we thank thee once again for the hallowed moment in your presence. We can only anticipate what will it be to dwell above, to behold thy glory, and with unfettered tongues to be able to worship you and praise you as we ought and should. We thank thee for these thoughts you absorb before our hearts. All oh, our hearts rejoice to know that God, in his love and his majesty, planned such a way that human beings sin and distant from himself can be brought nigh to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, the blood of bulls and bullocks and animals, however many, could never cleanse a sinner or bring us nigh to God. But we thank thee for thy son, who was willing, O oh God, to leave thy father's, his father's bosom to come to this earth. And O oh God, we think of the sufferings he endured, the lonely life, the fastings, the hunger, the scorning, Eating the death. Oh God, as we look upon these embers, remember the having of his soul. He was made sin for us, he who knew us sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Lord, we thank thee for all the precious thoughts from every heart. And from all the praises and thanksgivings from every soul bound, bound, bound in your presence. And we take of this bread, O oh God, and to take of it, O oh God, to solemnize our every heart. May we sense the fresh, the preciousness of redemption. And the exercise to offer thee the worship in an unusual fashion such that thy heart might be made glad once more, once less, before we see your glorious face. As we take this bread, Lord, we give to your thanks in the worthy, precious, and adorable name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 This bread will be great. This is not a community, but the body of Christ. For we do many.
Let us give thanks for the cup. Once again, O oh God, we think upon the preciousness of your Son. Remember of old when man sinned, God took the, the skin of an animal. Cover their nakedness. Blood was shed. I know God ever since man, every creature that was born was born in sin. I know God many, many sacrifices were offered in order to approach a righteous God. But no matter how many animals was shed, were offered, their blood could never take away sin. But we thank thee that God had an answer. They came when he said, I will send my son. They reverence him. But they took him and they crucified him. We see from his head and his side and his feet, the sorrow and the blood draining As he said, away with him, we would not have this man to reign over us. Little did they understand that God in his wisdom and his mercy and his grace Offering his son. His blood, son's blood, was being shed to save them from eternal wrath, to save us. For thy word declares that without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission. And oh God, we thank you for the blood. The blood of Christ, thy son. The blood by which our sins were cleansed, and we are one in Christ, O oh God. If we take this cup, we worship you and we bless you. We ask you all to accept our heartfelt worship and our praise and our adoration, for thou indeed art worthy. We ask this in the worthy and precious name of your lovely Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
in a moment or two, let us rise and sing hymn number 18. But first, let us consider Hebrews 8, 1 and 2. Of the things we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set at the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heaven, the minister of the sanctuary and of the true temple that the Lord pitched, and not man. So, as we have Remember the Lord another time on this beautiful Lord's Day. The things we have spoken, this is the Son. We have such a high priest. We thank and praise him for his mercy in saving us. That he's the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He's coming again to take us home soon. Can we rise and sing? Number 18, verse 5 says, Crown him the Lord of Heaven, one with the Father known. One with the spirit he given from yonder glorious throne, and especially this part as the brother was exhorting us to think of praise. To thee be endless praise, for thou for us hast died. Be thou, O Lord, through our endless days, adored and magnified. Not only the endless ages of eternity to come, let us praise them. Think of the picture the brother painted us there as he exhorted us with Mr. Pell arising before the sun to sing at the top of his voice if he could to praise the Lord his Savior. Number 18, please. Could we run? Amen. Yeah. 
as, as you know, uh, as you should know, uh, tomorrow is uh, Remembrance Day, November 11th, uh, and we meet together every week to remember the Lord, uh, but as a society we've set aside uh, one day a year where we remember and, and show our appreciation uh, for those who have sacrificed and, and given up so much uh, in service uh, of, their, of their country. Uh, you know, I was uh, reminded just this past week on our campus, there's a tower called the Soldier's Tower, uh, and it's on the main quad, if you're familiar with the St. George campus at all, and university campus, and the way that it's set up, for a lot of classes you have to walk underneath that tower. There's a tower that goes up and there's an archway, and you walk underneath, literally underneath that tower. Uh, and it, it, it really is a reminder of the fact that those of us like myself, who had the privilege of attending the University of Toronto, uh, did not have to, to make the decisions that some of our predecessors did, and, and that tower is set up uh, to remember students from the University of Toronto uh, who, who went and who fought, uh, particularly in World War I, but also in World War II and other, uh, and other conflicts and, and, and regions where Canadian forces were involved. And we, one of our assignments in one of our classes, I don't remember which one, uh, was to, to do a profile on one of those individuals. Uh, and, and you're reminded as you read through the biographies of the fact that, that many left very promising careers. They, they were ready to go to medical school, to law school, and, and they went over uh, and, and they fought in the war. And those are things that, that, that myself and, and young people now at university, it's, it's not even a consideration. It's not even something that, that crosses our mind that, oh, maybe tomorrow I'll have to go and, and fight overseas. Now the... Remembrance Day is tomorrow, but as we've mentioned uh, in, in years past, we, we do have individuals here who have served in various capacities uh, with our armed forces. Uh, and I think I forgot one person last year, so Bob will correct me if I leave someone out, but Bob uh, has, has served uh, our country and, and we appreciate him and, and his, his service and what he has done. Uh, Mrs. Montgomery as well. Uh, I think she's the one that I, I forgot and Bob reminded me of last year. Uh, and actually, I don't think I was aware before last year that, that this is something that, that she had done. Uh, and, and this is a time when we can appreciate and we can remember those uh, who, who gave their lives. Uh, we just recently, uh, we have a very short memory as a society, but uh, I believe it's 198 Canadian soldiers who died in Afghanistan, and just because it's not in the news, it seems like uh, a long time ago. Uh, but there are still those who are over there and, and who are fighting. Uh, and as Christians, sometimes we struggle with these with these times of remembrance because many of us have certain views on on war uh, and, and the appropriateness of some of these conflicts. But these these times are not about that. They're not about political views. They're not about whether we agree with conflicts and decisions by our leaders, but they're about gratitude to those who have, who have gone before us and who have, have sacrificed so that we don't have to think about these things. We don't have to, we don't have to consider uh, whether our kids and grandkids are going to have to be sent off uh, to conflicts like this. So what I'd like for us to do uh, as we uh, just as we close the meeting, before I close in prayer, let's just spend uh, a minute of, of prayer uh, for, uh, for those who are serving right now, for those who have served, for families that are still dealing with the loss of, of loved ones, uh, and also for, for veterans who have come back. There are thousands and thousands of veterans who have come back who are very severely disabled, either physically or dealing with uh, post-traumatic stress uh, syndrome. Uh, and and who need our prayer as well. So let's pause, remember them in prayer and reflection, uh, and then I will come up and, and close the meeting in prayer and we'll be dismissed.
Father God, as we bow in prayer in thankfulness to you for the wonderful country where you place us, but we also those who gave their lives, gave their youth, gave so much to answer the call that was needed to stop oppression in the past and even now at this moment in Afghanistan and many places around the world. We thank you for the freedom we have, but we also thank you for the men and women who gave themselves to buy that freedom for us. Help us always to remember that even as the Lord Jesus Christ gave himself for the sin of the world, these people have given themselves for the peace of him. We thank you for all this. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Father, as we have paused for this very brief moment uh, to reflect, to remember, and to pray, Father, we, we thank you for this country that we live in. Father, we, we thank you for the, the freedom that we enjoy, the freedom that we exercise every time we come to this place and we open your word and we proclaim your word uh, publicly. Father, we recognize that this is a freedom that is not shared by the majority of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, we would not take it for granted. And Father, on uh, this weekend and tomorrow as we would celebrate Remembrance Day, Father, we, we pray that you would always Give us an appreciation for those who, who have given so much. Father, there are many who have given their lives, many who have given of their health and who have returned uh, with very serious injuries and disabilities, many who have given of their loved ones, who have sent their sons and their daughters, husbands, wives, mothers, fathers over to conflicts, uh, and, and they have not returned. And Father, we would lift all of the families up before you who have uh, given this sacrifice in, in various ways, who have felt uh, firsthand the impact of, of conflict and war. Uh, and Father, we, we pray that you would draw very near to them uh, each day of the year, not just the days where we pause to remember, not just the times when these thoughts are brought to our mind, but Father, that you would be present with them. Father, if they do not know you, we pray that they would find peace in the Prince of Peace, that they would turn to you uh, as their Father, that they would not turn to other means to deal with the loss and the pain, but for the Father, that they would uh, look to the One who is in control of all things. And Father, we, we thank you for, for those uh, in, in our number who have, who have exemplified this spirit of, of sacrifice uh, and of giving. And Father, we thank you for, for Brother Bob and, and for Sister Isabel, Father, and, and for their service for, for us and for this country. And Father, we pray that you would richly bless them, that you would uh, bless them for, for their sacrifice and bless them for their service. And Father, as, as we would go through this, this Remembrance Day tomorrow, we pray that you would uh, be very near with them give them a, a true sense of your presence. Father, as we would go throughout this day and continue with our meetings, we thank you for the time that we spent remembering your son, as we do at the beginning of every week, remembering his ultimate sacrifice, remembering that sacrifice that took away all sin. And Father, we pray that as we go through this day, that in whatever capacity we speak of him, whether it be in the Sunday school or in, in the meetings, both this morning and this evening, that you that your Son would be presented in all of His glory, and that many would turn to the Savior, not just here, but throughout the world. Commit ourselves into your hands now, and your Son's most worthy and precious.